go, man. What I'm gonna need you to do is take me from the top, man. You, Kinky B, and that boy Jeezy. Y'all boys linking up and saying that this music is what the move was. How did all that stuff come about? I mean, go to go back a little, um, I'm saying going back in time, and I was in the streets, I was a youngster in the street, mm -hmm. you know, from Duncan Block, from Duncan Avenue, Macon, Georgia. That's right. So, you know what I'm saying, me and Kinky B, we came from the same hood. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we was in the street doing the street shit, and um, I had just got out of YDC for a stream of um, robberies and shit, and um, Kink stepped to me. They, my, in fact, Kink came to me, he was like, when I got out of YDC, the U prison, he was like, man, you still rapping and shit? I'm like, yeah. So he like, man, you know, I just met, met my little, I, I met somebody named Lil J. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? He my new partner. We trying to do some music shit, man. Let, let's link up and do something. Yes, sir. So, you know, because at the time, you know, Kink wasn't a, wasn't rapping. Jeezy wasn't rapping, no shit like that. So they they pretty much relied on me to do the rap shit because yeah. I'm the only nigga from the hood that was rapping at the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they came to me. Basically, I met Jeezy at the at the Making Mall. You know I'm saying we shook up. You know what I'm saying? The, the chemistry was there. So we linked up and we started this record label. Well, basically, the, the, the first time we, we did a record, it was on a compilation album called um, Hell in the ATL, actually. Yeah. It was it was a record done up in the A-Town. Yeah. And it was produced by said Black and G-Money on Ichabon Records. You remember okay. Ichabon? Yeah, I know about yeah, Ichabon. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we did a, we did a dope-ass record on there. And then once we did that shit there, and you know what I'm saying, Jay, Jeezy and Kink, they seen, you know, the money that their cousins was generating off that one mixtape. Yeah. So they was like, fuck that, Mill. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Back then they called me Mill, Lil Mill. Yeah. So they like, you know what I'm saying, man, we need to we need to link up and um and just do a whole album. Yeah. So Kink and Jay, Jeezy, they started a record label called Young Gun Entertainment. And they wanted me to be the, the sole artist at the time. Mm -hmm. So I started putting records together. And from then, I, I, I included like two more of my homies that used to hustle with me in the street. Mm. So we formed a group called the Big Boys. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Everything else was history from then. You know what I'm saying? That's how that's how the whole CTE movement started. So you know, before CTE was Young Gun Entertainment, and um, a, a year or two down the line, we realized that Young Gun, the name Young Gun, had already been used up. Yeah. So you know, we had to. You know, back then the, the computer wasn't so accessible. You just couldn't. You know, Google <laughs> shit so quickly about, like we yeah. do today. So when they did find out that, that, that the Young Gun name was already registered, mm -hmm. they're like, man, we need to come up with a new motherfucking name. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we sat down at the table, and, you know, we, we, we was on some corporate shit back then. You know, we yeah. were thugging in the street. So, we, yeah, we was on some corporate shit because we always want to make the transition from the streets to, to corporate America. Yeah. And that was the main theme, the main reasoning behind, you know, naming the, the label Corporate Thugs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was in the street real heavy doing all the, all the street shit. And um, right when we formed the record label, we, you know, we did an out on Young Guns Entertainment. We did an album called um, Blame It On The Yay. Mm. You know, we was like really real, real dope boys back then. You know, we was selling a lot of dope. Yeah. So everything, you know what I'm saying, that we did, we, we we wanted to blame this shit on the cocaine. You feel me? <laughs> so that's the reason we named this shit Blame It On The Yay. Yeah. So we did bl Blame It On The Yay on Young Gun. And then we formed, you know what I'm saying, CTE and, you know, during that time I had a shootout with the police and caught, caught a couple body charges. And um, I end up going to going to prison. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I end up getting fucked up. And you know, CTE from that, Jeezy had invested. Jeezy and King had invested so much money in those behind. Yeah, I mean, so much motherfucking money that it wasn't no turning back. It was like you know, we didn't invest it. We didn't invest it down there a million dollars into y'all as a group. Mm. And y'all niggas, my other little homie called a murder charge. My other my other partner. You know what I'm saying? He. He was steady in and out of the, in and out of prison, so I was like, they ain't had no choice. So Jeezy Kink told Jeezy, man, you know what I'm saying? I think you need to, to start motherfucking rapping, man. Like really going <laughs> going hard, going for real. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because at first, you know, Jeezy he, he would do a little rap shit every now and then, but he wasn't a rapper. He wasn't as good as he 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 is that we know of as yeah. today's Jeezy. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, back in the day, Jeezy, because yeah. I don't know what Jeezy doing now, yeah. but um. The, the shit when he was dropping the, the motivation, the the 101, the inspiration, all that, all that five Jeezy shit. Yeah. You know, um, he wasn't that type of rapper. You know, he was on some real, you know, copying like Pastor Troy ad lib, pimp C shit. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, when I went to the pen in like 02, you know, he just really went real real heavy. Like, like fuck it. He put it all on the line and um, you know, he he actually got a deal. So that's how the whole corporate thug movement shit came about. You feel me? Gold Mouth, what went through your mind when you went to prison and CTE went damn crazy and you was right there? Yeah, man, it's crazy because 
right before I got, you know, I was on a run and shit. So I, before I got the United States Marshals got me and shit, you know, me, Jeezy, Meech, you know what I'm saying, Big Meech, BML, you know what I'm saying, my brother Cut, you know, we King, we was all in the club, in the strip club and shit. And, you know, Jeezy was telling me, he was like, man, you need to, you need to fall back and, and you know what I'm saying, kind of lay low on that street shit, you know what I'm saying, because this shit going to blow, we going to pop. Yeah. And I was like, man, that shit ain't paying my bills, you feel me? So I'm like, fuck that be how you yeah. <laughs> So I'm still in the street doing all this wild shit. And I be damn, man. So when I seen him blow up, to answer yeah. your question from the pen, that shit was like, it was bittersweet. Yeah. Cause you know what I'm saying? Like I was the hardest shit on the label. Yeah. And I knew I would have been there. You feel me? But man. you know what I'm saying? That, that's that's the bitter part. I was yeah. like, damn, I'm supposed to be right there. You know what I'm saying? Like doing my own shit. Like being or being right there, just you know what I'm saying, being a part of what's going on. Yeah. Cause you know, I'm a part of that history. Exactly. You feel me? And um, because if if it wasn't for me, you know, we wouldn't have never got in the rap game from 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 the from, from the gate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so um, you know, Coach K had came along too. Yeah. During that time, you know what I'm saying? I went to prison and shit. So, you know, it's like it's kind of crazy, but um, I would never take credibility for nobody's career because mm-hmm. you know everybody have have you know you have to have first the determination you gotta That's right. you know you gotta go you gotta get that shit yourself yeah but I, I I say to myself damn you know if it wasn't for me you know doing my rap thing back then you know it, it wouldn't it, it probably wouldn't be no Jeezy it wouldn't be no QC no Coach K you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. because these people they got they start you know what I'm saying right there with us you feel mm-hmm. me and that's that's real big so just by me you know being a, a young a young nigga rapping in the hood and you know other brothers want to put this shit together like that. You know they they believing in me to to do my rap shit to, to blow up in the music industry. It inspired you know what I'm saying a, a whole generation of rap even to this day. My you God. see what I'm saying? And that that shit like that shit is like very profound. It's something really meaningful when I think about it. Like damn, it wouldn't it wouldn't be no motherfucking you know Jeezy as we know. It wouldn't be no Jeezy period if it wasn't for for me. You know what I'm saying? Like doing the shit I was doing, and it wasn't. And, and Coach K when he even got in the music industry had not it been for you know the CTE movement at that time. You know what I'm saying? And the shit that he was going through, the, the street shit Coach K was going through. So you know that shit like inspired generations and generations of brothers. You feel me? Coming out of making with it, man. What was that like when you started to see? The world, man, and y'all moving around, and you trying to figure it out. How close were y'all to the promised land before you went to prison? Um, we was pretty close, cause when I think about it, my nigga, we we had just had a, a motherfucking a sit down with goddamn Puff Daddy at the Justin restaurant. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day when he was fucking with J Lo. Yeah, we had um linked up with Kevin Lyles, I think. You know what I'm saying? We we was fucking with um you know. Nas, you know what I'm saying? We had just hollered at Nas back then, you know. So we was trying to get deals with these different people. So we was in negotiation. Yeah. So we was we was close, but we was far because we was steady in the street. We was still, but uh, the crazy shit is this, man. You know, a lot of niggas be talking about money and diamonds and shit. But to be real with you, you know, we had I had that shit when I was I, when I was 15, 16 years old. You know, I had a motherfucking. Then the two hundred thousand dollar crib stand next to doctors with Rolexes and shit. Like we was really putting in work. We, we it wasn't the cap shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We was really moving. You know what I'm saying? That work in the streets. So that what made our movement really catch. Our movement caught so motherfucking hard behind. Because I swear, I swear by Allah, Wallahi. As any motherfucker in the streets, anybody that's seen the Young Gun movement, any old footage of us, you'll see that when we when we went to do shows, mm-hmm. we had motherfucking. The, the latest Lexuses, the latest Benzes, the latest motherfucking Jags. We had a, a, a 10 to 15 car motherfucking caravan. You feel me? And all these cars were paid for. And we would ice the fuck out. This was during the during the cash money era when they yeah. was talking about bling bling. Yeah. I don't know if BG and Turk them really had that shit, mm-hmm. but we really had that shit. You see what I'm saying? We really was iced the fuck out. We was really living like this. So that what, that what, that's what. Cause our movement to catch so so heavy so big, and then you had niggas like me on the label. You know, I was I was putting so much street work because it was all about street credibility. Then yeah. it wasn't about the cap shit. You feel mm-hmm. me? It was about street credibility, and because I had such a notorious reputation in the street, 
not to brag on no 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 street no no murder shit, but they was always putting my name in murders and, and kidnapping niggas and all kind of crazy shit. You know, despite you know what I'm saying, you know, allegedly, you feel me? And so they had me on the news a lot of time for multiple shit. Like I went to a murder trial that when I was 13 years old for a oh dumb God. for a double homicide. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? And so you know, my name was like really notorious, and, and this did that alone. Like you know, what I'm saying, you know, I, I pretty much. You know, protected Jeezy to be real, cause niggas ain't fuck with Jeezy when he came to Macon, cause Macon is notorious. Mm -hmm. Macon is like motherfucking company California. Them niggas will kill your ass in a heartbeat. You cannot mm -hmm. even go to to a club in Macon, Georgia, Harley, without this bitch getting shot up. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Look in the news, South Bloods, anywhere you'll see that the gang, the gangism in in Macon, Georgia, mm -hmm. is is the shit is ridiculous, man. So you can't come to my city. And you ain't connected in the streets. Yeah. So when Jeezy, when when King told Jeezy to come to the streets, you know, count of my city, you know what I'm saying? I was the street nigga that everybody came to for any kind of issues. Any kind of smoke, niggas like, man, don't fuck with that nigga, that nigga little mill partner. Nigga, them niggas gonna kill your ass. Like simple mm -hmm. as that. Yeah. So when he came to the Mac town, you know, he was protected on the strength of my reputation and fucking with and fucking with me, you feel me? Mm -hmm. And that shit was major though, you know what I'm saying? But Jesus always been a stand up nigga. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna never say, you know, he finna let no nigga walk up on him and chomp him off. No, yeah. he'll stand up dude, but that don't mean shit, you know what I'm saying, when you come into another person's city that you don't know nothing about. So, you know, it was my reputation that pretty much held the whole Young Gun movement down. So, when we rapped on tracks, niggas was like, damn man, them niggas really living like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas, them niggas street niggas, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You know, them niggas real dope boy, real street niggas, they had all the elements. So we, we we began to like really blow up and our name was like going crazy. Man, we was doing shows back then, bro. Like sometimes we'll have to do like three shows in a week and we underground artists. Mm. So that's major. And they was paying us for shows back then. Yeah. So you ask me how close were we to making it? Shit, you know, we was very close to making it, you know what I'm saying, as far as getting a, getting a major deal for our label. Yeah. And, and, and underground-wise, we was getting a big check, you feel me?